Cooper, hook of the leg. He did it. He did it. How's it going? It's Brian Sosha in the studio, graced by the presence of a former world heavyweight champion, a former U.S. champion, the current tag team champion, and from what I've read, um, your first eBay auction winner in years. Oh, yeah, yeah. The first <laughs> eBay auction I've won in years. I won uh, the first 54 copies of Mother Earth News. From the yeah. 70s. From the 70s, yeah. 1970 to 1978, I want to say. <laughs> I can't wait for it to come. So, <laughs> Well, if you, if you probably nailed you on shipping, 54 issues. Yeah. Uh, if, if you don't know by now, Daniel Bryan's in right. studio. <laughs> Smackdown tonight, uh, Wells Fargo Center. It's going to be a good time. I mean, tickets as low as 20 bucks. Best value in family entertainment. You can walk up to the box office. It starts at 7 o'clock, and it's going to be the only place to be in Philadelphia tonight. Am I correct in saying that, Daniel Bryan? Yeah, it's going to be an awesome show. Uh, I want to talk about, before we get into more SmackDown talk, I want to talk about, I mean, you won on eBay. You went and sought out 54 issues of Mother Earth News. So that's like the kind of guy you are, in my opinion. That's a good thing. I think you're a very mm. peaceful, good dude. Yeah. Um, you were a vegan. Yes. And now you're not a vegan. Now I'm no longer a vegan. But yeah. my girlfriend's going to be so disappointed because she was all excited. She's Dana Bryan's in Veg News or something. She's younger. Right, yeah, So yeah. they're probably going to be hating on you. But why aren't you a vegan anymore? What happened? Okay, so I became a vegan for health issues. And then um, I've developed a soy intolerance. So I, like, I've been getting really <laughs> sick lately. And so... Uh, I'm not laughing at your soy intolerance. I'm laughing right, at the funny yeah. tolerance. <laughs> and, uh, well, I mean, it's a very unmanly way to stop being vegan is to have a soy intolerance. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, and so I have so I was getting sick all the time and trying to figure out what it was and they found out it was the soy being on the road and being vegan and trying to get your protein in other than soy there's just nothing to eat because there's soy in everything like most of the vegan things that you can eat are tofu dishes and whatnot made out of soy so uh, just we did a food blood allergy test and found the things that I can eat and whatnot and so and it's not like I'm eating loads of meat or anything I'm eating mostly eggs and that oh, sort good. of thing right. for my protein well, so yeah that's good. so but it's uh, so this I don't know when this came out to people but all of a sudden on Twitter that's right people I saw it. people have just been bashing me on no, Twitter. The, well. the, the vegan community has been <laughs> they're like, angry. Yeah, they're very angry. Well, that's what angry. you want. Maybe, maybe they'll turn like, the dollars for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I find people in the sports entertainment industry, WWE, were fans growing up, some of you guys. Mm-hmm. Were you a fan growing up? A huge fan. And what, you know, when I talked to Cena in here, he told me he envisioned himself as maybe like one of the road warriors. What were you envisioning for your character that you would be? See, I always, when I decided to become a wrestler, I thought it would be like more of like a Dean Malenko type. Okay. I just wanted to wrestle, you know, and I never actually thought I'd be in WWE or WCW or anything like that, I thought I'd wrestle mostly in Japan, you mm-hmm. know, which is what I did a lot for the first 10 years of my career. Um, so, because I just didn't think like, oh, they like guys who are big. They like guys like the Ryback, right? The Ryback, <laughs> the Ryback. is exactly what the they WWE wants. Yeah. Eats loads of meat, you know, he's big, he's strong, you know, he's kind of weird, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> So, yeah, like, you know, somebody like the Ryback is like a, per, a per, perfect prototype for what WWE kind of wants, and I I never fit into that mold. Like even in high school, when I had to do a report in front of people, I would get like really nervous and stutter and stuff. But you just let me go out there and wrestle, and I love doing it. Feel you know? at home. Yeah, but I've developed into being able to talk in front of large crowds. You know, even small is, crowds. Yes. You're doing quite well here. When you were growing up, you said you like like Dean Malenko. Who are your other favorites? If you had an animal, I was like, oh, this guy's my favorite. Like the British Bulldogs. Yes. With okay. Winston. Years later, I came to appreciate Dynamite Kid. Yeah. But that yeah. wasn't the reason why I liked the British Bulldogs. I like them because of Matilda, you know, like, oh, look at that bulldog, he's so cute. But then, you know, as I got a little bit older, I liked guys like Dean Malenko, like Rey Mysterio, I love Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, I always loved, like, the technical wrestlers. Of course. Uh, now, what animal would you carry to the ring, Daniel Bryan, if you could carry an animal? I mean, if I could carry an animal to the ring, it would probably be like a monkey or something like that. <laughs> I just think that that would be awesome. Um, we're coming up with an idea uh, to see if, if some of the, one of the guys can come, come down to the ring in a, on a horse. That would like, be great. <laughs> that would be great. I know they tried that years ago. It might have been with Michael, somebody uh, in WrestleMania. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But I, and nobody's talking about this but me and... and a couple of the guys I write do with. it, so yeah. do it, man! I can yeah. see you You'd be like Paul Revere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a, or a herd of dogs on a sled, you know, <laughs> like you know, mush, mush, mush. You know, it's winter. You know, we're we're getting, we're getting there, <laughs> making it happen. All right, so uh, I got a lot of Facebook questions and stuff, and and I interviewed you before a couple of times. I know you remember those times. Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah, obviously. I know you yeah, yeah. And we talked. You said that they gave you a list of names. One of them uh, was Buddy Peacock. Buddy Matter of fact, I hashtagged it on Twitter, Buddy Peacock, when I tweeted you today, which I think you retweeted. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Um, 
What were the other names you can remember on that list? Okay, the other name I could remember, the only other one I can remember is Lloyd Bonnier. <laughs> and, uh, That's awesome. So that, that, was my big, that was my big plan, is to come in as either Buddy Peacock or Lloyd Bonnier. You could do like, that. Yeah. You could do bo- I think you could do both of them. You're that right. good where you can kind of just make it happen. <laughs> and I think that uh, also, that you, like when they're coming up with these names, um, I, you've said it before in an interview, so I can say it. Your real name. You, do you mind? Yeah, no, I don't mind. Brian Danielson. Yeah. And uh, somebody tweeted me, why did you reverse the name? Like, uh, well, who, whose idea was that? Well, the idea, cause, because now for WWE uh, superstars coming into WWE, they want to own the intellectual property for the name. For, makes sense. You know, for licensing reasons. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, they can't own your real name. Mm-hmm. So William Regal was actually the one who, su- who suggested the name Daniel Bryan. And he said, because Daniel is a strong first name, yeah. you know, and Bryan, because it's two syllables, is easy for people to chant, you know. And so, like, I thought, uh, like, I put it down on the list of names thinking, ah, oh, that's kind of stupid, you know what I mean, you know. And turns out, you know, that one, that's the one that they picked. And two, it's worked out really well for people as far as people like chanting my name or whatnot, you know. So, so. They're chanting that. They're chanting yes. I often wonder, though. This is this is something I wonder because I have a really just messed up mind. Uh, if if you're intimate with, let's say, a lady, uh-huh. and they say yes, 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 do you think about your wrestling? Because I would that would make me okay. Make one, right? one, it's <laughs> never it's never <laughs> happened. It doesn't. It's not. It, it's never. It, it never. I don't know if this is PG. It's not long enough. To, okay, <laughs> no, it's, it's PG. Oh, uh, you mean the story you're telling? Yeah, right? the story. Oh, I'm okay, telling, yeah. let's just. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, yeah. Anyways, no, it's never happened to me. If it were to happen, I would probably roll my eyes. I would probably just roll my eyes and go like, Oh my gosh. Oh, Oh, not on. me. I would parade around the bedroom. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, let's let's shift to one more topic here. Uh, last time we talked, you said speaking of the yes chant that you got that idea from a UFC fighter, correct? Uh, he has never approached me. It's Diego Sanchez. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, but I did hear an interview um, from him saying, you know, saying that he thought it was cool, you know, that sort of thing, and. Uh, and, you know, because I think he's a great fighter and everything. I'd be interested to know what he thinks now that I'm doing the no's instead of the yes, because he thought it was like a positivity <laughs> thing. Like, oh, yeah, if he's down with doing the positive, if he's, you know, I want everybody to be positive. You know, I want to inspire people. And I, <laughs> and I was listening to it going, I don't think he understands what, what, what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, man, whatever works, works. Yeah. Now, um, I, to keep with the Facebook questions here, a guy uh, wants you to quickly talk about your ECWA Super 8, because we're about half an hour from where that happened. I don't know if you know that or not. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and they want to talk about your memories in the ECWA Super 8, which uh, still goes on, but is done by a different person now. It's not yeah, the same guy. Yeah, yeah. It's not Jim Kettner anymore. Um, yeah, so actually that was my big break, because in... Uh, 2000, I got signed by WWE, and then in 2001, I got fired for the first time. But before that happened, um, the Haas brothers, they knew Jim Kettner and and whatnot, and they said, "Hey, there's there's this guy down here that you should put in your annual Super Eight tournament, which at the at the time was huge. a huge deal, a yeah. huge deal in the independents." And so they did it. I went all the way to the finals, wrestling low key, and that's really when I got fired. That's what had made my name on the independence. It didn't matter that I was in WWE developmental. Nobody knew of me. Nobody knew who I was except through this Super 8. And so being in the finals of the Super 8 led me to being in uh, the finals of the um, APW King of the Indies tournament. Yes. And they had me win that, which made the Ring of Honor people who were just starting a new, like a a new promotion say, hey, this guy's a main eventer. We're bringing him in as our one of our main event guys. And it's just one of those things that, you know, a lot of, a lot a lot of this is just circumstance. A lot of it's just luck. What's the difference between me and a guy like Chad Collier? I just got better opportunities than Chad did. True a lot that. Of, Nigel you know, McGinnis, all of them. It's the yeah, same thing. It's, all, so. it's, 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 it's You come off as very humble for being here, too, and I think that's cool because a lot of your buddies who – don't take us the wrong way, but are just as good, you know, as you, or uh, close to as good as you. They didn't get that break. Well, so and cool that's you can represent and, them. And that's the thing. A lot of people who who get to this level, a lot of them, and I'm always astounded by it. They're like, "Oh, I work so hard. I work so hard. I deserve to get here." My dad works 60 hours a week at a paper mill. He wow. works hard. hard. You know yeah. what I mean? Like lots of people out there work hard. That doesn't mean that you deserve to be on television or that you deserve anything. For me and uh, a guy named Robbie Brookside who's a old-time English wrestler and He's stuff amazing, like that. He's amazing by yeah, the way. He helped train William Regal. He um he told me this business doesn't owe you anything. None of this owes you anything. You do this because you love this, right? Yeah. So if you get good stuff out of it, 
you know, that's great. I've been very fortunate, you know, but I've also seen a lot of people work every bit as hard as me and it didn't turn out for him for one reason or another. You know, Nigel McGinnis is a per- perfect so example. Good. His health reasons, you know, he just can't wrestle anymore. And it's just sad. It is. It really is. Uh, we're almost done here, but I have to get to this. You're, <laughs> this comes from Josh.com, his name is, on Facebook. <laughs> he wants to know your, he has two questions. One, he wants to know your favorite tugboat match. <laughs> I, I honestly don't remember a single tug. I don't match, either. I, so, yeah. Maybe natural disasters. Okay, and is, is, this one might be a little easier. What letter of the alphabet do you hate the most? Josh is, has a guess. He wants to see if he gets it right. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. I would have to say probably uh, Z. Maybe oh, Z. Josh was wrong. He said Q. I don't know why. I do. You know, I was thinking Q. Josh, that's a good. I was e- thinking either Q or Z. I was thinking what's very difficult to do in cursive, and oh, it's yeah. Q and Z. So. They're almost the same. Yeah. Look at you. You're yeah. all like your penmanship. Really <laughs> well, look, uh, Daniel Bryan in the studio to promote SmackDown. There's a, there's a fan here. I don't know if you mind this. He came in from really far. He couldn't get into the meet and greet. He didn't want a ticket to get in. He really wanted to meet you. He says that uh, you may know him and he's a big fan. Could I bring him in real quick? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you, Nick? Could you could you bring in the fan? Thanks, man. Yeah, he's pumped up to see you, man. Like this is this guy. I couldn't really understand what he was saying, but he calls and yells. It's it, it's it'll be good. I mean, I think that you'll. I think he's. I felt bad. I don't even know if I'd want this guy to be in the meet and greet. To be it, honest, is with this you. the Ryback? Is, no, no. Did you bring I, the Ryback? But in? while you're here, the Ryback. Do you ride with him? Because I noticed that on Twitter. Okay, so uh, sometimes I ride with the Ryback. Sometimes I do not ride with the Ryback. Sometimes the Ryback is too much to ride with. Does <laughs> he sleep the whole time? I feel like he's a big animal. Would you no, sleep? no, he doesn't actually sleep. He's actually very entertaining. He's. Uh, I, I found out recently that he's oh, incapable of love. Comes. It's Ken the Box. Oh no! Ken the Box is here. Ken the Box. Ken the Box is ah! coming to me. Ken the Box. Ah! Ah! Do you know how Ken the Box goes? He goes like this. Oh, Jesus. Ken the Box in studio. This is huge. I think I think that he may be the new tag team champion. I mean, other than you can get rid of Kane. Look at that. Are you okay? Are you okay? Where's, where's Kane? Where's Kane? Where's Kane? Ken, that, that being said, Ken the Box. Text, before we text everybody, uh, we might have to end this interview. Daniel Bryan is back down tonight. Comcast ticks. Oh. TTIX.com. Stay back, bro. Oh. Okay. Although that was right back in there, I think, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, but stay back, all right? But tonight, you want to come out, tell them right now, don't turn yep, your back. Yep, okay, yeah, day. yeah. Come Finish come out to there. the uh, Wells Fargo Center tonight. SmackDown's going to be taping. It's going to be awesome. going to be a great show. Coming out. Tickets start at $20. It's going to be an awesome show. Go! Here's the cover! Hook of the leg! 